Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for June 16, 2023. Here we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with a goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, increasing our faith and pleasing the Heavenly Father. For the Word of God in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The book of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 12, reads, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7 reads for we walk by faith not by sight living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises and the book of John chapter 15 verse 7 reads if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples And Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30 reads, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Amen. And so the words of life that we shall hear today, June 16th, 2023, are Psalm 14. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through verse 50. And the Old Testament reading will be from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 1 through chapter 18, verse 46. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. There was a reading today in the introduction from the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for All, too. I pray that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and your ability to walk in those promises. Amen. And I pray that if Jesus for All, too, has been a blessing to you, that you would share Jesus for All, too, with another, and that you would consider subscribing. Amen. And now Psalm 14, a Psalm of David, and it reads, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Verse 4. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? who eat of my people as they eat bread, and do not call on the Lord. Verse 5. There they are in great fear, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Chapter 7 and last. Verse 7 and last, pardon me. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name, are every of us the hearers. And now the New Testament reading. Continuing today in the book of Matthew with chapter the book of Matthew chapter 12 hallelujah and it reads at that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath 
And his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest? Or have you not read in this law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. Verse 7. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a certain man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Verse 12. Or how much more value then, then let me take that again, of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is, it, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. Verse 19, He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. Verse 22. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will this kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Oh, how can one, or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? Verse 30. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Verse 33, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. Verse 36, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Verse 38. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. 
But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Verse 41, The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then, verse 45, He goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Verse 46. While he was still speaking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside, seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Verse 50 and last for today. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in Jesus' name, are every of us the hearer. Amen. Amen and amen. And now, the Old Testament reading, continuing today with the book of First Kings. The book of First Kings. Hallelujah. Chapter, chapter 17. And it reads... And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I will command the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Verse 7. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And she was going to get it, and as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, And please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Verse 12. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Verse 13. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first, and bring it to me. And afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Verse 15. So she went away and did according to the word of Elisha. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke 
by Elisha. Verse 17. Now it happened after these things that the son of the man who owned the house became sick, and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him up to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back to him and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Chapter 18 And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, and there was a severe famine in Samaria. And Ahab had called Obadiah, who was in charge of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord God, feared the Lord greatly. Verse 4. For so it was, while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah had taken one hundred prophets and hidden them, fifty to a cave, and had fed them with bread and water. And Ahab had said to Obadiah, Go into the land to all pardon me to all the springs of water and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, so that we will not have to kill any of livestock. So they divided the land between them to explore it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Ob Obadiah went another way by himself. Verse 7. Now as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him, and he recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is that you, my lord Elijah? And he answered him, It is I. Go tell your master Elijah is here. So he said, How have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you. And when they said he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here? Verse 12. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from you, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you into a, to a place I do not know. So when I go and tell Elijah, to tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Was it not reported to my Lord what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, how I hid one hundred men of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now you say, Go tell my master, Elijah is here? He will kill me. Then Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. Verse 16. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Verse 17. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the bows. Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Kamal, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Azariah. Azariah who eat at Jezebel's table. Verse 20. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Verse 22. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore let them give us two bowls, and let them 
choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood. But put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God will ans who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. Verse 26. So they took the bull which was given them, and they prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning e even till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is sleeping, and must be awakened. Verse 28. So they cried aloud and cut themselves, as was their custom, with knives and lances, until the blood gushed out of them. And when midday was, midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. Verse 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then when the stones he built, with the stones he built an, an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two says of seed, and he put the wood in order cut the bowl in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and was, and also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass at that time, of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, and that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and executed them there. Verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink. For there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Verse 44, Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot, and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Verse 46 and last, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name are every of us the hearers. And now the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. Continuing today with verse the book of Ephesians, continuing with verse 10. The book of Ephesians, continuing with verse 
10, and it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand be therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for giving us your armor, that we can stand our ground and resist the devil in the evil day. Thank you for the belt of truth. Thank you that the spirit of truth lives in us and with us. His name is the Holy Spirit, and he is greater than us who are in this world. Thank you for the helmet of salvation, the forgiveness of sin, and delivering us from sickness. And thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for the shield of faith. Your word, which is the sword of the Spirit, that we are able to defend ourselves against every evil attack. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for Psalm 107, verse 20, which reads, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ for sending your word, the sword of the Spirit, that we are healed and delivered from every destruction. And that when evil does come upon us, by faith in your word, in your promises, we are able to stand and to use the sword, your word, to defend ourselves. For you have said, greater are you that it is us than we who are in this world. That by you, we can run through a troop and leap over a wall. That we are more than conquerors by you. That by your stripes, we are healed. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every evil that comes against us we condemn. For this is our righteousness in you, O Lord, and we are grateful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name.